Thank you. Before this rolls out, I will uh, add a supplement to the, what I said about fin finitistic dimensions yesterday. It didn't fit the slides, so let me, let me add, if that's readable. And the finitistic dimensions. So uh, I was talking about one uh, finitistic dimension problem, but they're actually a conjecture, and they're actually two originally by Bass. <coughs> and the first one was the conjecture that the little finitistic dimension of R equals the big one. And the second was that the little finitistic dimension is finite. Now, the, in the setting of art in algebra, which I was mentioning yesterday in the, uh, in the examples, then the, second, uh, the first conjecture fails. And that's a result by uh, Birgit zimmermann Huisgen from 1992 in the famous paper in the Invenciones. She constructed an example even of a monomial finite dimensional algebra. So the path algebra by quiver with uh, the relations uh, generated by monomials, which had the, uh, she constructed such an algebra R such that the little finitistic dimension was, say, n, and the big one was n plus 1 for any n. She constructed one such algebra for any n greater or equal than 2. And then later, Smalo, in 2000, he added an example which was not a monomial algebra, but still it was doing better in respect to the dimensions because the little dimension was 1 and the big one was n for arbitrary n bigger than 1. So, the, so that's the first conjecture. That's disproved even in the art in algebra case. So the one that I was talking about yesterday was the second one. And this is still open for art in algebras. And it's equivalent, as I said yesterday, to the existence of this maximal tilting module, Tf. That's actually equ the equivalence is for one-sided Noetherian rings. And uh, also we, uh, so this is open, and, the, uh, and this tilting module can be infinitely generated, even in the, cases in, in the case of art and algebras. And uh, we also, we were proving Remember, for the Ivanaga Gorenstein rings, we were proving actually both conjectures. And that was using the fact that the class of all modules of finite projective dimension is a tilting, is a left tilting class. And once you have this, this implies the first finitistic dimension conjecture. But not the other way around. So we have some examples that this is not this is sufficient, but not necessary conditions. But I was using this condition yesterday, and let me finish by comments on the <laughs> commutative Noetherian case. There, the answers are known for years. There, the big finitistic dimension is the cruel dimension of the ring by a result of Bass and. I think there was one uh, inequality, and the, the other was by Reynaud and Grusson. Another seminal paper in Invenciones in 1971. I will come back to that paper in my talk tomorrow, because I will use it for this uh, ascent descent properties of, uh, related to tilting. And uh, Auslander, Buchsbaum, uh, they proved that if R is a local, commutative Noetherian ring, then the little finitistic dimension is equal to the depth of the ring. And therefore, the second, in the local case, the uh, first, uh, first uh, conjecture holds if and only if the ring R is uh, co And of course, the co-dimension can be infinite, as we know, there are examples of Nagata, so the neither of the conjectures hold in general for uh, commutative Noetherian rings. Okay, so that's just the extra information. 
besides the tilting. Okay, s but the, own, the open problem is the one that I mentioned yesterday, this, this thing for Artin algebras for 40 or 45 years. Okay, let me come back to <laughs> the topic of this uh, presentation, of this talk, and that's the structure of tilting and co-tilting classes over commutative Noetherian rings. So we, I will not recall the definitions of tilting modules and classes, but uh, I will, in fact, define the dual notion first, co-tilting modules and classes, and this will maybe remind you of the dual setting because this everything is just replacing, uh, uh, everything is defined in a dual way, so that, that's quite easy. So this I will do first, then I will look at the case of uh, one co-tilting modules in classes and see what's going on, what, what's the structure of those classes and modules. Then we look at the general case and then we uh, look at some extra properties in the, in the, in the dual setting, namely the existence of minimal co-tilting modules and the co-localization of co-tilting modules. So uh, what are co-tilting modules in classes? So the definition of a co-tilting module is exactly dual to the definition of a tilting module. So you have some, you have a ring, you have an N, and the a module C would be will be a left. Our module C is N co-tilting if it has injective dimension at most N. The so there are no self-extensions, but if in the stronger way, X I C to kappa to C vanishes for all I at least one and for all cardinals kappa. So the dual condition to the tilting, where there was a direct sum in the other component, and then there's a uh, there's this uh, presentation or I long sequence uh, where W is a as some injective cogenerator, and these modules in the sequence are some ends of uh, possibly infinite direct products of copies of C. So that's the dual of at at t prod C. And the tilting the cotilting class. It's just the left perp, intersection of the perps, contravariant perps in this case, of the, uh, induced by the uh, module C for all i at least one. So this is called the cotilting class, or it should be left cotilting class. There's also the right one, but we will not need that. So, And we say that the two cotilting modules are equivalent if they uh, induce the same cotilting class. Or equivalently, it can be said again in a dual way to tilting that the prot C and prot C prime are the same classes of modules. So the basic example, of course, in dimension zero, zero co-tilting just means injective cogenerator. And at this point, you already see that in the na commutative Noetherian setting, there's a minimal one. So there's the this gives you some some motivation to look at minimal uh, co-tilting modules, which we will do later on. Now, this, uh, this definition is formally dual to the definition of a tilting module, a tilting class. But of course, as we know, uh, well, there's no, ex in general, there's no uh, duality in module categories. So there's, uh, but there's, there's, uh, there's a way around so that you can actually, uh, you can actually r realize this du formal duality by an explicit duality in this, in this easy way. Just take a tilting module and take the dual module in the sense, the character module of that module. So that's possible for over any ring. So from a right module, you, cre you, you create a left module. And uh, in fact, in the commutative setting, commutative Noetherian setting, you would better take this, uh, this, instead of Q by Z, you would take an injective or minimal injective cogenerator, and this will work the same way, which I'll be used later on. <coughs> and it turns out that this this dual module, if T is a tilting, this is a co-tilting module on the other side. And if this was n-tilting, this other is n-co-tilting. And the equivalence is also reflected. The two mo tilting modules which you start with and dualize them will give you equivalent co-tilting modules if and only if the original tilting modules were equivalent. So this explicit duality or character module duality works very well and you actually see what's going on using the uh, finite type theorem for tilting classes or tilting modules. We know from yesterday that if you have arbitrary tilting module, there's actually a, a finiteness condition behind a finiteness, <coughs> a grain of finiteness behind the scene. Namely, there is a set of strongly finitely presented modules of projective dimension at most n, which uh, can replace the tilting module, the single module, 
and define the same class, the tilting, the right tilting class. And if you know that, then you you, you see immediately that the left perp, so the co-tilting class in used by the inject by the dual module, is just the the same thing where x the <coughs> sorry the covariant x is replaced by uh, the covariant tor. So th that's the so the perp indicated the inf intersection of left uh, of uh, kernels of x functor that th this t this perp upside down will indicate the intersection of the kernels of the covariant tor functors. So from each tilting module you get a co-tilting one, from each tilting class you get a co-tilting class in this easy, easy way. <coughs> of course, it, it's not clear whether uh, this explicit duality will actually capture all, all the co-tilting. In other words, the question is, well, we will say that the co-tilting module or class is of cofinite type if it comes from a tilting uh, by dualization. So a co-tilting module is a, of cofinite type is if it's equivalent to a dual of a tilting module. That's, th th that's the definition. <coughs> and uh, of course, there's this duality, so you have a correspondence between tilting modules and uh, co co to, uh, uh, tilting classes, uh, co-tilting classes of cofinite type, which is just given by this, uh, where you go through the resolving subcategories, which we know that parameterize tilting classes. So if you have a tilting class, you take this resolving subcategory. That's the le left, uh, left tilting class intersected with small, uh, strongly finitely presented modules, and take the tor perp, and this will be a co-tilting class. And vice versa, if you have a co-tilting class, uh, of co-tilting class of cofinite type, and if you have a co-tilting class of cofinite type, you do the dual thing and you get a tilting class. So tilting classes correspond one one to co-tilting classes of cofinite type. Uh, of course, you maybe see that I'm not using this trench terminology by just by to bother you, but it's there's really a problem behind. It. Yeah, not all co-tilting modules are of cofinite type. So the dual, the dual definition actually cannot be captured by a explicit duality. So <coughs> before we come to that, let's look at an example which we studied in the case of tilting for Dedekind domains. So we have a Dedekind domain with a quotient field Q. <coughs> and there we know that the tilting modules are parameterized by subsets of the maximal spectrum, so maximal ideals. And indeed, if you take such a subset, you can take... Uh, uh, this module, which is uh, dual to the uh, corresponding tilting module, namely you take the product of the adic modules, p adic modules, over the primes that are not in this set, and add a copy of Q of the quotient field, and it's easy to see that this is a co-tilting module, one co-tilting module, and the corresponding class is the dual class, it's the class of all p torsion-free modules, where p is uh, maximum ideal not in that selected set maximal prime ideal. So this is really the uh, dual, uh, dual setting. So this co-tilting module is equivalent to the dual of the tilting module that we discussed yesterday. So this, this is the torsion-free module sitting between R and Q, and this, this, uh, these are the inj indecomposable injective sum up index by primes not in P. So it's easy to see that this is a co-tilting module, the dual, equivalent to the dual of the, the one that we looked at yesterday. And the, the theorem says that actually there's no, pr no problem in this setting. Each co-tilting module is equivalent to one, one of this form. So each co-tilting module is of cofinite type. So that's the case of data key domains. And uh, we will see later on that this, this nice property that the Formal duality actually is realized by an explicit one, extends to commutative Noetherian rings, but it doesn't extend to all, even to all commutative rings. So let me mention this problem in more detail. So there's a result by Stovicek which says that every co-tilting module is pure injective. So even if it's not equivalent to a dual of a tilting module, th that would be a dual module and therefore a pure injective module, it, it may be pure injective without being a dual of a tilting. So it's always pure injective. And then there's a, this surprising result by Bazzoni that proved that if you have a valuation domain, then uh, whether or not all co-tilting classes of cofinite are of cofinite type depends on the property uh, of the valuation domain being strongly discrete. So if it's not, uh, if it's strongly discrete, which means it has no uh, 
non-zero idempotent prime ideals, then things work, as in the case of data kin domains, but otherwise not. So that's the first example actually she had was this take a maximal evaluation domain with an independent idempotent maximal ideal, so that's not strongly discrete. And then the, the, the concrete example of a one cotilting class, which is not of cofinite type, is the class of modules whose torsion part is uh, uh, semi-simple, uh, annihilated by the maximal, uh, maximal ideal. So this is just compute and see that though it's a perp of some, some set tor perp, it's not a tor perp of a set of strongly finitely presented modules in that setting. Okay. Let, let me mention now another relation. We, at the end of the talk yesterday, I was uh, mentioning the relation of tilting and approximations. We seen that the uh, one tilting torsion classes are just, uh, uh, are just the torsion classes providing for, for special pre-envelopes, and that's, that's it. And there's a similar characterization for co-tilting classes. This in the definition I gave at the in the first slide. So the following are equivalent for a class of left modules. It's a co-tilting class for some n oh co-tilting module should be here, sorry. Induced by some co-tilting module or the abstract characterization is a torsion free class. It has to contain the regular module and it has to be covering. So it's not just special pre covering but it's even covering. This comes from the fact that these cotilding classes are closed under dark limits, and such classes, when they are special pre-covering, they're always covering. So it's a, it's a slightly different statement. And in general, for in the n-dimensional case, there's a result of Angeleri and Coelho, which says that the cotilding classes induced by some cotilting modules, in the general setting are just covering classes closed under products, direct summons, resolving, and the the other, uh, the right cotilting class corresponding to that uh, consists of modules of bounded injective dimension by, by this n. So this is completely dual to the characterization we had for n-tilting modules. Okay, so this, uh, this is the relation to approximations which we will use later on. And now let's look at the commutative Noetherian case eventually. So let's start with one-dimensional modules, so mo modules of injective dimension one or one cotilting modules. So here it uh, turns out that the associated primes of modules are key, key tool, and, and I mean, of in, I including the infinitely generated modules, of course. So the, the sets that appear here of primes, prime ideals, are those uh, that are closed under generalization, which by which uh, I mean the, that the set is a lower subset of the spectrum. So with each prime, there's a smaller one. Uh, there's a, uh, all smaller ones are included. And the structure theorem says that uh, there's a one-one correspondence with the any commutative Noetherian ring which we between one cotilting classes and subsets of the spectrum containing the associated primes of the ring and close under generalization. And the correspondence is rather easy. So if you have a, such a cotilting class, you just collect all the associated prime ideals of the modules in that class. This is what I denote by as as C. So just all associate primes that appear in some module in the class, and that's, of course, a subset of uh, spe the spectrum. And conversely, if you have a subset of the spectrum where this property contains us, R and close under general, then you just look, take all the modules whose associated primes are, uh, which use only those associated primes in that set, and that's it. So this is rather uh, easy, and if in fact, the proof is not so uh, maybe you can switch on the light for the plug. Thank you. Let me just do one or indicate one implication. So if you have this class uh, of modules which have the asso whose associated primes are in this given set P. So let's call it C. So how do you how do you prove that this is a one cotilting class? So one way to do it is just you first you prove uh, uses this uh, characterization by approximations. That's probably the shortest. So first you have to prove it's a torsion-free class. So 
So that's almost obvious because uh, uh, it's closed under submodules. Obviously, it's closed under extensions by the well-known properties of associated primes, and it's closed under products because it's uh, closed under generalization. Yeah, that's actually the by 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 the properties of associated primes. and uh, p being generalization closed. So that's easy. Of course, it contains the associated primes of the ring. Uh, and that's because, uh, uh, yeah, that's just <laughs> the assumption here. So what is interesting is to see that this is a covering class. And how do you prove that? And that's another trick. So in this, uh, these uh, torsion-free classes, in the case, in, in fact, even in the uh, one-sided Noetherian rings, they come from torsion-free classes in the category of small, small modules. So this C actually, there's, there's a torsion-free class, S, of small modules. So in small mod R, such that this C is just the limit closure of that. So this follows from some classic stuff. I, I've learned this from a paper of Chloe Booby, but probably it's an older result. So the torsion-free class in big mod comes, comes from a torsion-free class in small mod by enclosing by direct limits. And now the point is that this S contains um, the regular module of the assumptions, and such torsion free, uh, such class, the, the limit closure of such a class can actually be then as a result of mine with uh, Lydia Angelieri. This is just the double tor perp of S. So the limit closure can be in this case expressed by the vanishing of tor, because the class which is defined by vanishing of tor is closed under direct limits, and this is indeed the smallest such. And now the point is that if you have a uh, if you have a Tor, uh, tor perp of uh, anything, tor perp of any class D, then this is a covering class. Of modules. This follows, this is a, from generalization of the flat cover conjecture, but you can, it's actually, uh, also use the result that of Enox that this is a class close under direct limits, providing for pre covers So that's some standard stuff from approxi approximation theory. Yeah, so this is the uh, one direction of the proof. And uh, actually, the, the reverse implication is proved similarly. Just you yeah. So that's the easy case, one dimensional case. Yes? Uh, right, so there's a, there's a general construction that. You just uh, build this condition C3, which we have. So you take an injective cogenerator. So in principle, there's always an, a way to do it, but I don't think there's an easy way in general. So what you do, you just take this injective cogenerator, and then you take the uh, special C pre-cover of that, which has some kernel, and then again you take a special C pre-cover of that, uh, well, and, it, and uh, no, and in this case al already the th this is, is like that. So this is the this is the kernel already, and it turns out that the the cotolting module can be taken as the direct sum of of these two. Yeah, so we really you you actually kind of construct a proof condition C three in this way. So in this case, the, you just need to construct the special C pre-cover of, of the minimal injective cogenerator, and that, that's it. And just th this will give you a short exact sequence. And if you sum the middle term and the left term, this will be the cotulting module. But uh, it's, uh, to in general, it's, it's not clear what the st concrete structure of that module I is related to, to P. And I think it's not, it's, there's no general recipe even in the one-dimensional case, besides the data king domain. In one Gornstein case, there's also a formula of similar kind. Right, so let's look at the uh, general case. 
Well, let's, well, okay. First, let's prove that these co tilting classes are of cofinite type in the one dimensional case. What, what is the tool? The tool is the Auslander Bridge of Transpose, which I'm not sure that whether it was introduced here, probably not, but uh, just recall. It's a classic construction by Auslander Bridger. You take a module which is a, a finitely uh, generated or finitely presented module, actually, which has a presentation, it's a factor of a projective by Submodule which is uh, finitely generated, so this p zero, p p not are p not p one are uh, projective, finitely generated, and then you just use another duality, the contravariant home functor given by R, and this gives you the this f plus denoted here from this presentation f, and the co-kernel of that is the by definition the transpose of C. It's defined up to uh, it's not depending on the presentation. It's defined uh, up to adding or splitting of a projective sum n. So modular projectives, it's okay. And the point that is needed here is that if you have a prime ideal in the commutative Noetherian setting, such that the primes above that, including p, the vp, avoid associated primes of the ring, then the uh, Tor functor given by the transpose of the cyclic is the same as the home functor, they are isomorphic, and the projective dimension of this transpose is at most one. And these uh, facts that are known for, uh, for from the theory of Auslander Bridger, and that's also a paper of Sklerink, I think he computed more results like this. This allow you to show that the uh, given in the commutative Noetherian setting, if you take this uh, parameterizing set for a one cotilting module, namely a subset of the primes containing the associate primes of the ring and cross under generalization, then uh, the cotilting class corresponding to that can be expressed as the intersection of the tor perps of the transpose of these cyclic modules. There should be p here. R by p, the p is not in p. And once you know that, then of course the, the x perp of that transpose is the is the tilting class is a tilting class which whose dual is the co-tilting class here so the tilting module inducing that t script t is uh, has a dual and that induces this uh, c so this proves that any any co-tilting class because it's a torpor of a finitely presented module uh, a, a set of finitely presented modules is actually uh, of, co of cofinite type so that comes from the, the so the Auslander, uh, Auslander Bridger transpose is the tool here. <coughs> now let's look at the general case. So general commutative Noetherian rings. So we in the one-dimensional case, remember we just use one set of primes, and that was with some extra properties, and that was enough to parameterize the uh, co-tilting classes. In the general case, you need for n co-tilting or n tilting, you need n tuples of subsets of primes. And such an n-tuple is called a characteristic sequence of lengths n, when where these pi's are subsets of the spectrum which are closed under generalization. So again, lower subsets. They are included like this. So it's just an increasing sequence, not necessarily strictly. And the, con the third condition is that the associated primes of the i-th cosisigy of the regular module in a minimal injective co-resolution of the regular module uh, is contained in the set PI. <coughs> so that's again extends, this is just, <coughs> the in case n is 1, is just the condition we had before. <coughs> and now you define, for, s for each characteristic sequence you can define a set of modules, which are those modules whose associated primes of the module are in P0, associated primes of the first cosisigy are in P1, and so on. And again, the cosisigis are taken in the minimal injective core resolution of the module. And this is a class which turns out to be a co-tilting class, n co-tilting class, and conversely, each n co-tilting class uh, appears in this way. So there's a 1-1 uh, correspondence between characteristic sequences of prime ideals, of sets of prime ideals, and n co-tilting classes. And the correspondence is just the generalization of the one-dimensional case. So you take the class and you look at the associated primes of uh, the, cla the class and for the classes where ci are <coughs> defined here, ci is the left perp of the 
ice cos is g of the uh, quadratic module. So C naught is just C, and so that's the cor one correspondence. So these are of course subsets of spectrum, and you have to prove that they satisfy the three condition uh, defining characteristic sequence. And conversely, once you have a characteristic sequence, you define CP as I did, using the condition of the associated primes of the modules and their cosigies. <coughs> so uh, the point is that this class is actually a Cotilting class. This is a actually result in the general setting of Batsoni, I think. So this is really, uh, but of a d lower degree. So you can proceed by induction. And again. To prove that the cotilting classes are co of cofinite type, you have to express them as the kernels of the Tor functor of some set of finite, strongly finitely presented modules. And this is done by using a, another homological property sorry, of the, uh, of the transpose. Namely, if you take now the, an element of the spectrum, a prime ideal, and such that it, the VP avoids all these associated primes, not just of R, but all, all, these, other, all these other ones, then this, this thing would have, will have projected dimension at most n. The x functor, this one is equivalent or is isomorphic to this particular Tor functor where you replace the cyclic by the transpose or syzygy uh, of the transpose. And similarly, x1 of the transpose uh, and syzygy can be replaced by Tor. And once you have all these formulas at hand, then you can really have the f this uh, theorem, which we proved with Lydia and Jan Stavicek, uh, was published in the Transactions of AMS in 2014, I think. So the theorem says that these characteristic sequences to parameterize both the n-tilting classes and the n-co-tilting classes of modules over commutative Noetherian rings and the correspondence is uh, as follows. Once you take this characteristic sequence, you have the tilting class expressed either as a torperp, which you need uh, for, well, uh, as a torperp or as an expert using the transpose, and the cotilting class is kind of dual, dually expressed in the way uh, here. So that's, uh, that's the structure. And in particular, it implies that all cotilting uh, classes are of cofinite type because they are the kernel of Tor or something, yeah, fi strongly finitely presented. Okay, so now in the remaining time, let me just uh, look at the something which that has no analog in the tilting case. So that the dual modules are pure injective and this somehow allows you to get more information than in, in the tilting case. So I just mentioned two, two things that have no analog in the tilting setting. One thing is the existence of minimal co-tilting module. So this is an analog of a minimal injective cogenerator. So it's a, a cotilting module which is uh, a direct summand in any cotilting module which is equivalent to it. So it induces a cotilting class, and any other cotilting module that it uses is contains this guy as a direct summand. So the first thing which is interesting is the minimal modules, uh, minimal cotilting modules are unique up to isomorphism, and this is proved by. Uh, in a funny, th funny way, this is proved by the analog of Cantor, Cantor uh, Bernstein theorem that if you have a pure embedding of a co in pure injective module into another one and vice versa, then they're actually isomorphic. So the argument is the proof is same, similar to Be Cantor Bernstein theorem for cardinality. But this is known, I mean, that's not. <laughs> and of course, the example. The zero-dimensional example is known. There is zero minimal injective cogenerator over commutative Noetherian rings. It's just, this, as you know, the direct sum of the uh, intercomposed injectives in indexed by maximal ideals. So how, what do you do in general? So you have this uh, characteristic sequence, and you want to produce a minimal in uh, cotilting module co uh, inducing the cotilting class. So this is the construction. Maybe I should just briefly indicate what you do. So essentially, uh, you, uh, you take the, uh, you the, the role here is played by the differences. So the, you know that this is an increasing chain. So if you have a subset S in, in, at, at some level, so which is in contained in PI but not at PI minus 1, you can take this injective module where the primes are from that subset and then you take this, and then you compute uh, an iterative, iterated 
sequence of injective covers. So you compute the injective cover of this ES uh, by the modules that are in the in the smaller uh, in, uh, the using the primes in the smaller set. Now the kernel there's some kernel, and then again you compute the in, uh, the cover, uh, which is the uh, the next co injective cover where the PJ is for J smaller, and you go on like this, and you end with uh, zero here, and then the kernel of this this last cover is CS, and this is the minimal co-tilting module. So the theorem says that well this is just what I've revealed already. No, more precisely, if you have this commutative Noetherian ring and a characteristic sequence. You have a corresponding co-tilting class, and the minimal co-tilting module exists, and it's given by the sum. It can be taken a isomorphism as the sum of these modules C S naught to C S N, where these S N S Is are max. You, you can just take the maximal elements of the uh, of the difference for P I from P I minus one. So, uh, and these are unique, as I said. Okay, and the last remark, again, which has no analog, or at least it, uh, there's only a partial analog, I will mention that at the end, is the construction of uh, co-localization. I think this is not, I don't know how much this is used really in module for, for modules over the community of Nathurian rings. I think it was first used in by Schenzel maybe, or th some paper years ago. So it's a dual construction to localization. Instead of tensoring with the localization of the ring, you, you, you just take homes. This is called co-localization of a module, in this case as the maximal ideal. So what, what turns out that if you have a commutative Noetherian ring and you want to understand the co-tilting module, the structure of the module, you can actually reduce the problem to local rings in the way that you just look at the maximal ideals and you co-localize the co-tilting module. And this will be a, a co-tilting module over the local link in, at that maximal ideal. So that's that this you can prove just by computation. What is interesting is that you can go back. If you have a set of such co-tilting modules, and th it ha they have to be compatible, I will explain why. It's, it's not an arbitrary. These are not arbitrary, they come from a given C. But if you have such a set, if you have the CM, then you can just take their product, and this will be a co-tilting module equivalent to the original C. So you can go there and back. And the compatibility condition is, uh, I think, yeah. It just says that uh, if you have a, uh, if you have some, so uh, these comes, uh, each of them has some some uh, characteristic sequence that describes the co-tilting class, and if there's, if you take an ith term in in for one maximal ideal and the ith term for another one, then if there's a prime below both maximal ideals, it it it, ha it has to be in one of the pi's at the same time as in the other. So it cannot be, it is in one and not in the other. That's the compatibility. So the primes that are occur below the uh, M and M prime uh, that are in uh, one, uh, that are in one, uh, one of the set PIs, it must be in, in the PI corresponding to the other maximal ideal. So I, I won't go into detail. So there's some compatibility condition which they automatically satisfy if they come from a co-tilting module. And conversely, if you have a compatible set of co-tilting modules over these local rings, they, they, th it comes from a co-tilting module, and the co-tilting module is easily recovered just by taking the product. So that's, that's the uh, nice thing here. So in principle, you can reduce the problem to local rings. And the, uh, the, the, the strange thing is that if you do the same thing in for tilting, so now I eventually come back to tilting modules, if you have an n-tilting module over a commutative ring, and you localize, if in fact, in any prime or any any multiplicative set, this will be in a, in a tilting module over the local localized ring. That's easy to see using the finite type uh, property. So you can, of course, produce some compatible system of tilting modules over local rings. And there's, a, again, a dual thing. There's a correspondence between the tilting modules over the original module and over the uh, this uh, over these um, Mac, uh, localized sorry rings, but there's no there's no way to go back. So if even if you have a compatible family of tilting modules over lo uh, over these localizations uh, of R at maximum various maximal ideals, there's no way to get back the tilting module, because if you just you would 
think you would take the sum, but that's sum. Even if these are, say, projective modules over the local localized rings, uh, the sum is a flat module, yeah, but it's not projective. So remember, if you the zero-dimensional tilting modules are projective, projective uh, generators. So if you have a projective generator, you localize it, it's a projective generator over the local ring. But as a module over R, it's flat. Yeah. So if you sum that up, you will never get back the projective, you just get a flat. So there's no, this some doesn't seem, this, this part doesn't work simply. Yeah, but that's not that bad. And of course, uh, it's just showing that the pure injectivity and the colocalization work smoothly in this case, while the thing that you would expect, it's, mo it's easier, the localization uh, and uh, sums that, that don't work. Okay, so that's, that's all for today. So these are the three papers I was essentially using for my presentation. That's the transactions paper on the classification. This is a paper where we do the minimal co-tilting modules. And this is this colocalization business uh, that we did uh, for, for the co-tilting modules. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah. Is that hard to show that the tension torsion property localizes when you have a non-Euclidean ring? Uh, and tilting? It does, yeah. yeah. It, it's just uh, uh, so the projective dimension localizes, the x vanishes, it's just to take the t three conditions. It's not, uh, it works, it works for, yeah, but it's, uh, this, there's this finite type thing, so. So the, 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 the three defining conditions are uh, these. And the third is the existence of this core resolution for R. Where T I are in at T. Okay, so now if you take a multiplicative set S, K, and R, so commutative, and you localize then the PD of T localized at S, I don't know how to denote it, maybe T, T S or T S minus one, okay. This is most N, yeah, that's clear, so that's. T1 prime, T3 prime is also easy because you just localize the whole thing. And this will be in this T and TIS will be in at TS minus one. Yeah, because it's just some ends of direct sums that works. And the second condition, let's see. Uh, right, so what you do, yeah, so you, right, you know that this is of a uh, finite type. So what you want to prove is that x r s to minus 1, t s to minus 1, t s to kappa 0. Right, and you know that uh, this is a finite type, so this... T there's a set of strongly finitely presented modules. I should avoid S now, so let's call it mm, P. No, no but the point is that you can uh, replace the T here. I instead of proving this, uh, you know that this is a finite T is a finite type. That's important, otherwise you don't prove. Finite type means that T perp is the same as, uh, say, C perp for a set of strongly finitely presented modules. And that means that this T is actually built uh, by transfinite extensions by the, the modules in this class and their syzygies. And they are also finitely presented modules. So, and you know that, and this and these live in the, th this C, this lives in the left tilting class induced by, by T. So, 
you have this condition, then you also have the condition for C. It's actually equivalent, uh, because if you have it for C, you have it for anything filtered by the Auslander lemma or Eklof lemma. So once you have that, then you have the same thing for the localized. Yeah. If you localize, you can localize in a, if this is finitely presented, you can you get a this this is true, yeah. Because the formula works with are finitely presented here. And then you know that the T S is just filtered by its transfinite extensions of these modules. So again the text vanishes. So if you go through this game, it's not clear a priori, I agree. Yeah. <coughs> Right. Right. That's for the commutative Netherian setting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, this is already done. Yeah. What more? I I don't see. What, what would what could I prove with that? No this no is the best we can get. Are we? I see. So if this concept is available uh, for non netherian rings, that's, that's my question. Because community of Netherians are done, and this is classified, and I don't think we can get more information. OK. So the, the transpose. OK. So you replace R by the semi-dualizing. Right. So it depends whether you have this formula for X and Tor, because that's, you have that? Yeah. No, no. I see. Because this is really homologic, all, all the, the arguments are just playing with Tor and X, then this transpose makes, uh, there's much more properties available than just the Cartan the general Cartan Eilbrecht, which I was using now. Yeah. So, uh, but I would like to see that, w which paper is that? Or okay, okay. Thank you.